Okay, cool. Um, so, uh, hello everyone. Um, so, my name is Rachel, um, Rachel Bartlett. I'm uh, Editorial Planning and Training Manager at Shorthand. Um, so, what I plan to do um, over the next, uh, just under an hour, um, is just talk to you a bit about what I do, what Shorthand does, and a bit more general context um, in terms of immersive storytelling um, and, and what's uh, going on in the industry. Um, it would be helpful if everyone could mute their audio um, just to avoid uh, background noise. So um, I'll just give you all a, a few moments to just do that. If anyone's having any issues, um, then obviously feel free to uh, demute and, uh, and speak. And obviously any questions as well, I'm more than happy if you just want to interrupt me um, as I go. Um, so unless I hear otherwise, I will keep talking. So hopefully you're all seeing, <coughs> excuse me, my screen now. Um, and uh, I don't really have slides as such. My intention is just largely to click through different links um, and do a bit of a live uh, demonstration. Um, but I've just got uh, some basic notes on screen just so uh, you don't have to look at my face. Um, and I'm just gonna have a sip of water, sorry. So just um, in terms of a quick introduction to um, sort of who I am and where I came from, um, my uh, background is in editorial. Um, I did a um, BA in multimedia journalism at Bournemouth Uni. Um, and when I graduated, I joined um, journalism.co.uk, um, which if you haven't heard of it, is um, a, an industry news site which reports on digital innovation um, in the UK, but also um, globally. Um, so uh, it's a, I'm obviously biased, but it's a, a great resource if you want to um, keep, on, keep uh, up to date with what uh, different organizations and individuals are doing. Um, so I joined there as a reporter in 2010. Um, and spent four years with the company, um, ultimately um, going up to the, the editor role. Um, and so uh, reporting on uh, innovation in uh, apps, social, um, and also in uh, obviously uh, digital news reporting. And while I was there, um, in 2012, um, there was the publication of Snowfall um, within the New York Times. Um, now, uh, I always try and avoid saying, <laughs> saying referencing Snowfall, but um, it's kind of where the, it was kind of the first major example of um, something different in terms of how um, stories were being told online that I came across. Um, and although it wasn't the first um, for a kind of mainstream news organization, it was um, incredibly uh, talked about within the industry, um, still is today, three years later. Um, and it, it provoked a lot of good conversation um, around uh, some of the challenges to do this sort of thing, um, particularly in terms of the time that's required to go into it. Um, at the time, I interviewed the author of the piece, um, John Branch, um, who um, won a Pulitzer actually for the for the story, um, and he talked me through um, what was involved in terms of the the effort. Um, so it was a six month um, project. Although to be fair, um, oh sorry, I've just seen that Paul's written a a little chat that something's crossed off. Is that better now, Paul? Yes, thank you. Okay, sorry guys. Um, so, um, yes, yeah, so he was talking me through that it was a, a six month um, process, although there were lots of other things happening at the, uh, at the same time in terms of the news um, agenda, Hurricane Sandy and the London Olympics, just two of those. So it wasn't that they were working solidly on it for six months, but that was the, the, the period over which um, there was work carried out, um, obviously, uh, from a development and editorial point of view. Um, it was a 17,000 word story, I think. Um, but it was it was it was a great example just to get people talking and thinking about what could be possible. Um, and I'm sure you've all seen it um, and discussed it um, previously. Um, but if you haven't, then it's worth taking a look. If not, to see where things have kind of developed today um, and which elements of it you still see in stories today, um, and which others have perhaps um, evolved over time. Um, because it's a good example of seeing what perhaps is working for news organisations um, and and what isn't. Um, but another thing to stress is that snowfall and that sort of thing isn't isn't uh, the defining definition of immersive storytelling, obviously. Um, so there is a, a huge spectrum of content which kind of falls within 
what is immersive storytelling. Um, and so just to kind of highlight a few different examples um, that kind of go beyond that kind of example. Um, so one example being interactive video. This is where I now try and find some um, links that I have open. Um, so um, this example by um, BBC News, um, basically having a video and actually then be being able to um, add layers, um, interactivity within it, so that as the reader goes through that, um, they can bring more context um, to the story as they want to. They can kind of take their own journey through the narrative. Um, and so um, as you play the video, um, certain elements pop up as you go through um, that you can uh, click on to, to get more information. There's a neat little tool actually called um, Popcorn Maker, which I think was used um, for this. Um, I might be wrong with that. Um, but it's a great little um, tool to be able to kind of bring different elements from around the web into a video um, and bring in that extra interactivity. Um, so that's uh, one example. Um, another would be um, from an audio perspective, um, and actually just very simply um, looking at kind of long form immersive storytelling, actually from an audio perspective, then the serial podcast, um, I think is a great example of um, an experience um, that actually wasn't just audio. So the podcast was obviously the main um, part of it, but it was basically a story, um, if you haven't heard about it already, um, a story that was um, split into 12 um, episodes, um, basically a, a very long form story um, if you bring them all together but what they also did was they had um, a kind of corresponding website um, where not only you could access um, the episodes um, of the um, podcast but they also provided um, kind of additional information and um, in particular if I scroll down I believe uh, what I'm looking for is at the bottom um, a whole area that carried kind of extra material so you could really kind of dive into some other types of media beyond the audio of the podcast um, to really kind of immerse yourself in the story um, and see um, all these kind of uh, notes and documents um, relating to the, the case which the podcast was about. Um, on the other side then there's more um, image-led um, immersive uh, examples of storytelling, so ways to deliver um, quite a big narrative, in this case by the Wall Street Journal, um, trying to cover 100, um, 100 years, um, 100 legacies over 100 years. Um, and so um, they delivered it, um, I'm not gonna, well, I am saying it, but it's not really uh, Pinterest in, in, in the design, but it's that kind of idea of giving someone um, just this, this uh, array of images within which they can jump into um, and again choose their way around um, the story um, but uh, it's a quite an immersive experience in that you can get lost in this for quite a long time um, as you jump to um, whichever subjects interest you most and then as you click within one it opens up um, a new window she says okay that's interesting was working the last time I used it. Um, but anyway, normally, I don't know what's going on there, but it opens up a new window, which gives you some more information um, into that um, part of the story. Um, another one that I really like, um, and this is um, a couple of years old now, but it's um, I still think it's a really nice example, um, just to give someone um, uh, audio and visual um, view of something that isn't a video. Um, so this was a story about the view from the top of the Shard, um, and when you reach the top, you can click on different areas um, across London, and um, it gives you little audio snippets that they've captured from those areas, so you might just have some ambient sound from a street market, that sort of thing. Um, so it kind of gives you that um, experience that covers more than one sense. Um, so again, I just another example that I particularly like. There are obviously thousands that I could point to, um, but uh, they're, they're the ones that um, I sort of feel cover quite a range of, of different types um, of immersive storytelling. And then there's also the whole, uh, largely new in terms of news, but the, um, the whole area of virtual reality, um, which is um, incredibly exciting um, in terms of immersive storytelling and what that could mean for news and how you could, um, how you can uh, help someone share in an event um, by delivering it through virtual reality. Um, actually, I was at a conference yesterday 
um, the News Rewired conference, which, um, disclaimer, I used to be involved in through journalism.co.uk, um, but they had um, a, a final session there, which was about virtual reality, and they had a guy um, from uh, uh, a place called Immersively, I'm just going to open that up in a new tab, um, which is a, a, a VR um, organization and some of the content that he was sharing, particularly this one um, around um, the Hong Kong um, protests um, last year, um, just kind of gives you a taste of how it could be used in news um, to give you that um, real perspective. I kind of feel like it's the kind of the next conversation along from drones and, and the impact that they could have in giving you this kind of um, fly on the wall perspective of an event. Um, with the kind of added drama of, of being in the moment and having that control through VR to, um, again, experience the narrative in your own way. Um, so they are um, some of the different uh, examples. Um, and hopefully you agree that it's an incredibly rich and exciting uh, area. Um, and that was, you know, one of the reasons why, you know, I was so keen to be more involved in the innovation that was helping organizations and individuals who wanted to do this and how I came to join um, Shorthand um, last year. So um, just to kind of explain what Shorthand is, um, I'll go to uh, our website. So we have um, two different products, two different applications, um, depending on if you're a kind of individual freelance journalist, individual content creator, or from a, a smaller organization. And then we also have our um, platform that's more an enterprise um, model, so it's for larger organizations. Um, and so um, if I just click on um, Shorthand Pro, um, because the uh, website is built within Shorthand, so it gives you a nice idea of, of what we're trying to achieve here. So the idea is that it um, makes it possible for um, a journalist, um, someone who doesn't necessarily have to have any coding ability to be able to go in and create a story that is responsive. So um, if I bring the um, screen size down, um, the text and um, images uh, respond according to the size of the screen that I'm on. Um, that is media rich. So you'll see, for example, we have this auto playing video in the top. We can bring in scrolling text um, that uses parallax scrolling to have images um, move at certain points as we scroll. Um, you can also bring in more sort of standard video. Um, so you can use it as a way to present kind of full screen video players um, wrapped around a, a really engaging narrative. And to do all of that without needing to do any coding whatsoever. Um, I'm, I'm not a, a developer. I only know very basic HTML, um, but, but I can, you know, very easily create um, a, a multimedia responsive story with interactivity um, without needing to do um, any coding. Um, so the idea is that you don't have to tell your story um, in a way that's just limited to perhaps this one CMS or two CMSs that you use um, either in your organization or as an individual um, on a blog, for example. Um, and that by creating a full screen experience with opportunity for interactivity, it's one way that you can make your content more immersive and therefore um, more engaging. Um, having said that, um, and the fact that you don't need to do any coding, um, both Shorthand Pro and our free application, which I'll go into in more detail for you, Shorthand Social, there is the ability to add in different types of code um, in order to um, expand on that. So if you um, are quite comfortable with, for example, just grabbing embed codes, um, perhaps in some cases tweaking them to make those responsive, um, but generally just that sort of thing. In Shorthand Social, you can do that so you can actually bring elements in from the wider web to um, enhance your story. Um, so uh, I guess the next question is uh, why? Um, so why are organizations um, really getting into this? Um, obviously, as I just mentioned before, uh, it enables them to kind of break out of their standard CMS. Um, so if they are limited in terms of um, how they can deliver stories um, and they perhaps feel in some cases stories would be better told um, through this kind of um, much more immersive experience, um, then it gives them that kind of power to do that without needing to worry about the, the coding required. Um, and it helps them, you know, give their stories a bit more TLC. Um, uh, if, they, if they want to be able to deliver a story through a series of full screen visuals, um, it enables them to do that. Um, 
actually it can also be really helpful from a um, reader's understanding of a subject um, because through interactivity you can um, help break complex subjects or statistics down. So we've seen stories where people have used um, uh, interactivity to deliver, uh, for example, a line chart in a series of stages so that actually the reader controls the movement of the line and it helps them um, kind of understand the statistics at each stage as opposed to delivering it in its final form like they might in a newspaper. Um, and uh, so you can actually use um, the the visuals and interactivity of those visuals to um, to break things down and make subjects and concepts more understandable. Um, and obviously, there's the engagement aspect. Um, you know, in terms of trying to um, do what you can to deliver the story in a way that will encourage people to connect with it um, uh, for longer and therefore get um, get the, the entire message of the story, um, then it, it is effective. Um, looking back at Snowfall again, I think the reported time on that was about 12 minutes on average. Um, and I think if you look at the um, sort of statistics for the kind of average um, time spent on articles in kind of standard CMSs, um, you're normally looking at under a minute, um, I think normally around 40-ish seconds um, is kind of average and not too bad normally um, for a kind of standard um, article in a, a CMS. Um, and generally, um, we found um, from, from those who report to us that um, the kind of average um, time spent in shorthand stories is, is, is around six to eight minutes. Um, so um, obviously these are averages, um, but it's um, quite a nice indication of the fact that when you do make the effort to um, deliver those stories that really benefit from this type of treatment um, in this way, that they can um, be effective uh, in terms of their engagement. Um, and another reason is that obviously um, with the, the, the growth of uh, mobile, um, that people need to deliver stories that work um, and don't just work but uh, engage across um, devices and um, so I'm just gonna go back to uh, my story here I'll just have some stats that it's probably easier to share um, on screen so obviously um, I don't need to tell you guys but um, you know mobile is now I was gonna say mobile is the future that's um, that's kind of ridiculous because it is um, now um, and there's numerous stats that you can look at. I mean, generally speaking, um, many um, organizations, news outlets in the UK already report that more than half of their traffic um, in the UK comes um, via mobile devices. Um, again, at that conference I was at yesterday, um, the keynote speaker was um, Emily Bell, and she was sharing a number of different statistics. Um, and one of the first that she shared was that this year, um, uh, according to this particular study, 51% um, of the time that um, I think a US um, adult spent with digital media is on mobile. Um, last year there were a couple of um, uh, studies that kind of back all this up um, uh, beyond obviously you know yourselves from the from how you use your mobiles and um, how significant they are um, but uh, an Ofcom study for example last year um, surveyed 10 different um, sort of key news brands um, and all of them um, reported a rise in their mobile traffic um, as opposed to just three um, that reported um, a, a rise for desktop um, uh, or laptop um, desktop traffic um, and then another one, um, this was by Cisco, um, again, last year, um, reported a 69% a increase um, in global mobile data traffic and reported that the number of mobile connected devices um, exceeded the, the population um, across the world uh, last year, um, I believe for the first time. Um, so um, I guess the next question is, uh, what do these stories um, look like? Um, so particularly in what we do, which is the kind of multimedia um, long form, although I'll come back to that phrase in a moment, um, stories that uh, enable you to come into a narrative and scroll kind of top to bottom um, through um, images, text and video. Um, and what's been interesting actually in the past um, year is that um, in particular, we've seen quite a, uh, a range in the types of stories being told with shorthand, um, particularly in terms of how they're being delivered. So perhaps um, m several years ago, um, it was very much the consideration that these were long form in terms of um, long pieces of text, 
if you think back to kind of snowfall 17,000 words um, and the idea that these were for kind of those big projects big investigations um, where you would have a serious amount of text that you needed to deliver in a more engaging way online and actually what we've seen um, particularly as I say over the last sort of year um, last few months to the year is that um, we've seen much more visually driven um, stories um, in particular stories that perhaps appear more like a photo essay although I say essay can be a, a, a fairly um, you know concise number of, of images um, and so um, it actually is it actually comes down to um, a question of whether the story can be better communicated through a deep dive so therefore that's why you might consider um, more immersive style storytelling but that that can be driven by text images um, video in isolation largely or um, in combination um, and so just to kind of show you a few examples of those stories where they're much more visually driven because the decision has been made that actually in that case for that story and for the message that's trying to be um, communicated visuals can tell that um, more powerfully um, than text or um, in, at least that they can be told um, in conjunction with text. So um, just to show you a th few examples, the first one um, here is by um, the Liverpool Echo. Um, again, actually, this was referred to by Alison Gao. Is, um, Alison Gao is the uh, head of um, innovation for digital at Trinity Mirror Regional Titles. And again, she was speaking at this event yesterday and she um, actually highlighted this story when she was talking about innovation in engaging um, communities online. And she mentioned, that I think her phrasing was that long form isn't about all the words. Um, and so being able to use something like shorthand means that they could deliver a narrative which did have some text. Um, I think she said it was about 300 um, words in total, um, but actually they could um, deliver um, more visual driven content as you go through. So in particular using kind of large um, full screen visuals um, in terms of images with just key bits of text, key quotes um, to kind of keep the reader um, hooked in, but more visually um, as they scroll through. Um, so that's just one example but as I say it also did have some um, some chunks of text in there. It's actually a letter that Stephen Gerrard wrote um, that it was used for and that's the end of that one. Um, this example by um, the Telegraph um, is another nice one particularly um, small amount of text here so every section um, uh, she says and then there's a bit of text okay not every section but most sections um, are kind of full screen images um, in some cases with a very short um, little bit of text perhaps explaining what we're seeing um, or just giving you that kind of additional little extra um, context um, but it's very much um, image driven um, with just these very small snippets of text as we go through just to kind of deliver that extra context that give us the, the extra layer of meaning um, to the images as we scroll through. Um, there's also this example by um, ABC in Australia. Um, and so this story, again, every section, and I think I'm right now saying every section for this one, um, is kind of backed by a piece of full screen media um, with some text coming in over the top um, because it very much wanted to set the scene and the character of the individual um, who's being um, talked about in the narrative. So hopefully that kind of um, demonstrates how um, you can think differently about how stories are shared online and that it's not just a case of um, having a kind of full screen image at the top and then just um, a, a quite a text driven um, and focused narrative. It's actually about um, what is the best way to tell each part of the narrative. And so from a planning perspective, what we um, normally see people doing um, and is kind of the advised um, process is that when you have a story in mind to kind of sit down and whether it's on paper or, or on a screen, kind of plot out the key sections of that story, um, whether they're chapters or just um, kind of the key stages of a narrative, <clears throat> and then um, start thinking at that point how you would best communicate each part of that um, and think about also what kind of media you might need to create to deliver that. Um, and it's really, um, it's really effective when you're actually creating media 
knowing the treatment you want to deliver than having um, already gone ahead and created created your kind of visuals um, and and written your text before you know how you're going to kind of package it up and, and deliver the story um, because you can you can always um, I think you always get that added um, added uh, engagement when you have um, content that's clearly been made for this treatment um, as opposed to kind of uh, added in after the fact. Um, okay, so um, I think I've probably shown uh, enough examples now and it's probably worth uh, moving into actually how you create these things. Um, now, um, the stories that I've shown here were created in our shorthand pro application, um, which has um, some additional feature sets in terms of how you can present um, uh, the different uh, combinations of media. And if anyone wants to know any more about um, how you can use um, shorthand pro and the pricing, um, um, and uh, anything like that, then feel free, um, Paul, to give my email um, and more than happy for people to get in touch and we can, we can go through that kind of one-on-one -on -one if that's something people are interested in at all. Um, for now, what I'm going to focus on is our free um, application um, shorthand social. Um, so if you want to um, kind of have a play around with this while I'm talking and have a go at doing the things that I'm doing, that's totally cool. Um, so this is the URL you would need to go to shorthand.com forward slash um, forward slash sorry social. Um, and then it's simply a case of um, signing in with your Twitter account. Um, so I'm going to sign in with mine. Oh. <laughs> Hot security. Okay, so once you've logged in, um, the very first time that you log in, um, you will see at the very top um, a link to um, our um, shorthand social guide. Um, so that's that will move down once you've started creating stories. But if you um, if after this you want to go and have a, a, a play at creating stories in shorthand social and you get stuck at any point, um, we do have a little help um, area that you can um, seek out information. But also you might find it helpful to refer to that guide. Um, but obviously the, the first thing that we'll want to do is um, create a new story. So we would click on start a new story and then that will take us into the editor. Uh, I'm just going to close down these other links because they don't need to be running anymore. So um, now we're in a brand new story. Um, and so um, if anyone's doing this at the same time, um, you should see the ability um, to start adding text to your title section. Um, we see in the top right hand corner, we have Facebook and Twitter share buttons that will be um, activated when we publish our story. And if we scroll down, we'll see underneath um, the other sections that we can add in below our title section to start to build up our narrative. So depending on what sort of content we're pulling in, um, then we would um, want to try um, each of these um, different section types. You might have a story that is um, entirely made up of um, sections that are full screen media with a small amount of text over. If we think back to that um, Wimbledon example, we could do that using just this text over media section. So within this section type, we can have full screen background media, either um, just an image or we can have looping autoplay video. Um, and that would just require us to have that video on YouTube and then we can drop in a YouTube URL and it will bring in that video. Um, that video is muted by default, but the reader can select to um, unmute that if, if they want to listen to any sound. There's the um, media section type. So if you just want to pull in some standalone media, an image or video, this time not auto playing video, just video with a with a play button, um, then you would use the media um, section. And then the first section is the, um, just a text section. So again, at that point, um, if you want to just bring in some text, um, which you can embed images, video and code between the paragraphs, kind of as you can see mocked up here, then you would use the text section at that point. So you can use a combination of um, any of those, or you can just use um, one um, or two, depending on the structure of your narrative. 
So it's quite helpful to already have built up um, an idea of your layout, how you're going to structure it um, and uh, have your text ready to pull in. And then you can simply go in and add um, the sections that you require. So what I thought I would do is um, to try and um, make this um, as interesting as I can. I'm going to um, actually create a post with you and the post is a series of tips um, I've pulled together on how to make the most of your content in shorthand social. So I'm hoping to give you tips and show you how to do it at the same time. So we'll see how this goes. Um, and then I'll be publishing the post at the end. So it will be obviously available um, after the fact as well. Um, I just want to check though that um, before I kind of go into this that everyone's kind of still here no one's got any issues or any questions at this stage or if I'm called cool to continue okay so someone's just asked whether it's possible to embed interactive graphics so absolutely I'll show you how you can embed code from elsewhere so basically in a nutshell if you've created um, an interactive in a third-party tool or perhaps you have your own HTML code that you've done that um, then you can just basically paste that in and embed it between paragraphs um, it the key is that the code is responsive so um, I'll show you exactly how you would do that when we get there and, and the kind of caveats to that as well um, okay so I'll carry on um, so in the title section, I can add um, main title text um, and I can also add a subtitle. So I'm going to go to a Google Doc where I have my text ready. So I'm first going to put in my um, title. Oh, let's go to the right thing. Let's put those next to each other. Okay, so I'm going to put in my title and then my subtitle. I've realized actually that I've got eight and I actually have 10. So let's just update that. And as you can see, I've hit a limit, so I'm gonna edit my text slightly. Um, okay, so I can move um, the text to the left, right or centre and obviously where I place it might depend on what my background media is. So to change my background media, I've got um, the option to add in image or background video. And again, background video um, is basically added in via a YouTube URL. So you would first need to add that to YouTube um, to get that um, uh, URL. Um, the, uh, as I said, the video will be muted as default, but the reader can choose to unmute that. And we have that in place because um, the reader has no control over that video playing straight away so we want the control over whether they have audio to be in their hands. I'm going to add in um, an image um, so I've got this image here. I'm trying to do a bit of play on words with fireworks and uh, making the most of your uh, content. Um, one issue that I know um, is, is the case for some people is um, kind of access to um, a resource of assets and um, so uh, you know images and video that they can use um, now obviously um, most most of us can go out and capture fairly decent um, images and video um, using just our phones um, these days um, you might also have other um, equipment that you can access to, to gather um, that sort of media yourselves there's obviously also other resources online in terms of Creative Commons and um, obviously just making sure that you're giving the necessary credits there's also a few um, places that collect um, Commons uh, footage that's been um, made uh, basically available um, and there's a couple of sites there's one called um, Pexels um, which has images and video um, so Pexels video is is the one for video and there's a nice one as well called unsplash.com which has um, really nice um, uh, free to use uh, beautiful high-res um, images um, so and it also has a search field which was added fairly recently which is really handy um, there's also another website called Pixabay which um, I think offers even more um, so there's a few resources out there which are really helpful if you if you are limited in terms of the, the assets you can pull in so I got this fireworks image for example from Pixabay um, so um, I've added in my media um, so now I'm going to scroll down and add in my first section and um, so my story is going to be fairly text driven so I'm going to select the text section um, and that then drops in an empty text section below my title so I'd start by getting my first um, bit of text 
and I'm going to paste that in. And the first bit of text is about um, how you can make the most of your title section in particular. Now, um, the tip here is the fact that obviously this is kind of the, the shop window to your story. It's the, the moment at which you can get someone to come through the front door and actually scroll down um, and engage with your narrative. So anything you can do within this title section to actually start telling the story, don't simply use it as a place to have a kind of uh, a, a placeholder um, image or something like that. Um, uh, as much as you can, you know, create assets and deliver assets that are really adding something, adding some meaning, adding emotion, adding atmosphere, um, particularly if you can do anything in the way of um, uh, where appropriate, obviously, autoplay background video. Think about how sl what slow motion video versus um, time lapse um, video would communicate. Um, so anything you can do to um, use your title section to um, encourage the reader to scroll through obviously beyond the appeal of the story itself and that's with your wording as well um, so as I mentioned in shorthand social you have the title and subtitle text fields you don't have to use the subtitle field and um, but you do have to use the title field um, and then you can put in your background media and you'll also see that um, your Twitter account that you logged in with is used as your byline um, and once the story is published a reader can click on your name here and it will take them to an author page on shorthand social and um, that basically is a page that carries all of the stories you've published so far so they can see other stories that you've already um, created and published um, on the platform. So that's my first bit of text um, so I'm going to go back now and add my second tip. Um, I'm going to keep it in the same um, section type. Um, I don't have a, a bit of full screen um, media to share at this point, so I'm just going to go through just format my text correctly. So this tip is about um, your structure of your story. So obviously, from a story storytelling perspective, um, it's um, it's no shock that obviously that's what's key here. It's about the story that you're telling, and that that is engaging in itself. It's not just about the delivery to ensure that you have an engaging experience. But you can obviously put time and effort into thinking about the structure, the flow, making sure one section, particularly if you're changing section types, clearly flows into the next, um, and how you can also not always just use text, but standalone visuals um, at some points to, to communicate part of the narrative. Um, so within Shorthand Social, um, you can add sections, obviously, one after the other, as we've seen. Um, so I could click plus here to change the section type that I'm working in, um, or I can carry on adding to this text section as I'm doing. You can also go back in and insert a section between two existing sections, um, so just so you understand um, the functionality there. Okay, let's add in tip number three. So tip number three is specifically about images and how you can use them at your best. Um, so there's three ways to use images within um, shorthand social. So you can deliver a full screen background image. That's using the um, text over media section. So as you can see, you get a full screen image in the background and a small bit of text can go in the center. So think back to those stories we saw where they had a kind of key quote or a chapter heading or a key um, snippet of text in the, in the center of the um, image. Um, you can actually, to be fair, move that text around as well so it doesn't have to just sit in the, in the center of the image. That background image will stay full screen across screen sizes. So if you think about how the story might look on your mobile phone, if you're holding that in portrait view, it will um, still remain full screen and we basically do a default crop to the center of the image. Um, so I'll show you how that looks when we've added one in. Um, but it does just mean in terms of consideration, any detail within an image that you add here should remain in the center um, because of responsive cropping, um, it will get cropped to the center. So if you have an image that has a person off to one side, just be aware that on a mobile phone screen in portrait view and perhaps on a tablet screen in portrait view, um, they'll be getting a more central crop. Um, so they may um, not see how that looks. Um, the other options, um, if you want to add in an image that doesn't get cropped, um, then you can use the media section and that will deliver just the image, no overlay of text, um, and it will maintain the image's aspect ratio. So um, no matter what height it is, um, it will maintain that um, and just sit full screen width, but it won't um, adjust to the, the size of the screen. Um, I think someone's just turned their audio and someone have a question. 
maybe not. Um, someone's just turned their audio on, so if they don't have a question, if you could mute that, that would be awesome. Um, the text section um, enables you to have images embedded in line. So that's kind of the third option. So you can either have full screen um, where it will get cropped um, because it will remain full screen across devices. Um, we have the um, inline um, option um, where, sorry, not the inline option, <laughs> sorry, distracted by chat. Um, we have the, uh, the option to add it as standalone media where it won't get cropped, or we have the ability to add it in um, inline between text. Um, so what I might do is um, do some of these as examples. So um, at the end of this bit of text, um, we talk about the different examples that I've just talked you through and the, the caveats of doing that. Um, and the, the fact that um, a picture can paint a thousand words, so you don't have to feel like you need to um, use text to always tell um, each part of the narrative. So what I'm going to do is, um, at this stage, I'm going to actually drop in an image to illustrate that. So I'm going to add in a text over media section, and I'm going to have a full screen image at this point. So I'm going to add in that, and I've got a picture um, here of the Mona Lisa. Um, which everyone is pretty captivated by. There's no text, she's just on her own. So I'm hoping that that demonstrates my point. Um, and now what I can do is to see how this will look for a mobile reader is click preview in the top um, header up here. Um, and I'll be able to get a real preview of how this story will look. So if I hit preview, um, it now gives me a preview of what my story looks like so far. Um, with my image um, in here. Now, one thing to just note um, is that if I bring that down to a um, different size viewport, as I mentioned before, we will start to um, crop to the center. So what we can do is we can move our browser window around so we can see what it will look like on a mobile phone screen, um, but we can see that it's getting cropped to the center. Now in this case, it's not an issue um, because um, the image is, uh, has the detail to the center anyway. Um, but if the painting was off to one side, um, we would want to probably insert this a different way. If I go back to the um, editor by clicking edit, and find our Mona Lisa. So I'm gonna get rid of that one. And this time I'm going to add her via the media section to show you the difference. So this time if I add in my image, it's not um, sitting full screen. So the height is actually higher than what my screen is at the moment. And we can see that we're maintaining that full height. And this time if I hit story preview, When we get to that image, um, if I bring it down to a mobile phone size screen, we don't crop the image at all. So we're keeping the full width of the image. It's not sitting full screen. It's just maintaining its natural um, aspect ratio. So I'm going to leave that in like that because I don't want to crop her. and I'm going back to the um, editor view of the story. Oops, sorry, I clicked on the wrong link there. Okay, so we're back in the editor. Um, and another thing that we can do is um, embed images in line, as I mentioned, between paragraphs of text. You simply do that by clicking the little plus sign that appears between two paragraphs of text, and then choosing your image to embed. So you could click image, find the image that you want, and embed that. And in fact, there's one that I can add up here. Um, so if I go to the bit about making the most of the title section, I actually have an image um, that shows different examples of title sections that I'm going to drop in. So I could embed um, an image in line like that, and I can make it um, either the standard size that it's added in, or I can actually make it slightly bigger if I want it to fill more of the screen. So that's the um, way that you would add images in line, and there is a caption field if you want to use that or I can add them more full screen width. Um, there was a bit of text that I just deleted on the end, which was about a way to create interactivity between two images. Um, so I'm gonna add in a text section again underneath so I can just add that text back in. 
Um, and this is talking about how to create a reveal effect between um, two or more full screen images. Now to do that, you would need to use um, the um, text over media um, section. Um, and I'm actually gonna um, take you to an example in a story. So um, this is another shorthand story that I've created before. Um, so the reveal effect is a way to have one image peel off another. So this is um, a black and white image of a leaf. And as I move into the second image, it creates this reveal effect between the two. So it can be used really effective to do the kind of then and now comparisons. Um, we've had stories about floods, for example, and showing before and after the floods. Um, and uh, lots of different examples of how you could use it. And it's simply a case of adding in two or more, depending on how many images you want to do. Um, so this could be your Mona Lisa um, image here, and then you could perhaps change it to a Mona Lisa um, image that's black and white, um, and you could do that um, reveal effect between the two. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna add a link to this in my post um, so people understand how to do it. Um, so I've got a bit here that says follow these steps. So I'm gonna highlight that text and just add in a link to that article so people can go and look at that in their own time. Okay, I'm going to continue now with my next tip, which is about um, giving some attention to um, our text, just like our uh, visuals. Um, so uh, again, this is obviously thinking about structure, but also in terms of how you show your text. So um, making sure that if you do have text over images, for example, that it's readable. So if we go back to my um, title section, for example, I actually feel like this white text here is slightly difficult to read. It's not particularly clear over the lighter part of the fireworks. Um, so what I can do is actually use this slider to darken the background media slightly um, so that my title text just stands out a little bit more. So I think there is about okay. Um, so now I can just make that um, stand out a little bit more. And you can do that in um, the uh, sections where you can have text over the top of an image. Um, another thing that you can do is um, apply formatting to your text um, in a text section. So if I highlight um, this text, for example, and I, I can apply header styles, so either header, header one um, or header two. Um, I quite like header two, so what I would go is do is go back and just highlight my headers and give them all that same um, formatting. Um, and another thing we can do is drop in pull quotes. Um, so if I had um, a particular um, bit of text I wanted to highlight, so I'm going to go for this one. And if I highlight that, I can hit pull quote and it puts that in some pull quote formatting. Um, if it was a quote from an individual, I might put quote marks around it and give a credit. Um, in this case, it's just taken straight out of my narrative. So I'm going to leave it as it is, but I am going to make it bold just to make it stand out that little bit more. So you would obviously go through your text and enter those in. And actually adding in headers and pull quotes is a really effective engagement um, technique. Um, so obviously it helps from the point of highlighting your key bits of narrative. But actually if you have a reader that comes into a story, you might perhaps first of all scan through it to have a look at, excuse me, <clears throat> to have a look at the visuals and the key parts of the narrative. You will find that if you have pull quotes in there and headers, it will help to kind of capture their eye <clears throat> and communicate to them what the story is about. Sorry, I just need some water. <clears throat> so they're really um, useful, particularly if you have, um, you know, a significant amount of text at one point, and particularly on a mobile phone screen where someone will be scrolling for a bit longer because of the smaller screen size, um, having those kind of pull quotes in there at really um, powerful moments in the narrative is really effective. Um, Paul, how are we doing for time? Because I... I we obviously started a little bit late, so am I okay to carry on for another 10 minutes or so, or do we need to wrap things up now? Okay, cool, I'll carry on until told otherwise. <laughs> um, okay, so um, I think that's everything in terms of the text that I wanted to highlight that you can do in shorthand social, um, but I do actually have um, another post um, that um, I created that has loads more tips in there from a particularly from a text perspective. Um, so this um, article here, putting it into words, just lots of really text focused tips um, on how to um, deliver content in a more engaging way. Um, so feel free to take a look at that. And I will um, again link to that from this post. Um, okay, let's continue. So 
my next one is um, to choose the best approach for video. Um, so just like with images, um, again, just looking at the different options within Shorthand Social and how um, you would want to use video most appropriately. Um, so I'm just going to give this um, some header styling. So again, with um, video, you can use it in three ways. Um, full screen autoplay in the background of text. Um, or as a full screen width video player via that media section. So again, um, that's gonna um, not sit full screen, it will maintain its ratio. Or um, in line between paragraphs of text. So again, if I um, hover between paragraphs, I can insert a YouTube video, uh, put my YouTube video URL in, um, and it would drop it in between those paragraphs. Um, so one thing to just consider with autoplay video, uh, as I mentioned before, that it's muted um, as default. So I'm just going to quickly check um, chat because I can see that um, someone's noticed, that someone's commented, sorry. Um, can we embed Twitter videos? Um, is that, can you send me a, um, a, a link to one so I can um, have a go in doing it live? Um, that would be great. Thank you. Um, so uh, autoplay video is muted as default. So um, obviously if you have sound within your video that you want to make sure your reader will hear from the very start, then I would recommend using the media the media section so that actually it's not auto playing and that when they click play they'll have that sound in from the start. The way to use auto play video is perhaps where you have just something that is more visually contextual than, or, than in the audio or it, perhaps if they turn on the audio they'll get some ambient sound um, but that it isn't essential for them to understand the video if they don't hear the sound. Equally if you have video in a story um, that has um, sound attached that people do need to hear. You still need to make sure that the narrative around that is um, so that the reader understands the story still because we've all been in that situation where we've been reading a story, there's a bit of video and we've left our headphones at home or whatever it might be. We're not in a position to hear it. So we still need to be able to understand the narrative without having had to watch that um, video. Um, Okay, thanks for that. I'll, um, I'll, when we get onto the embed code bit, I will have a go with the, the link you've just sent. Um, so um, that's what we've just talked about. Um, and again, just like with images or any other type of media that you're including in these stories, every single asset that you include, so image or video, should add something to the story. It can be really tempting when you have the ability to deliver media in this kind of immersive way to kind of want to throw everything at it. Um, you might have gone somewhere and taken all these images and, oh, they'll look beautiful if I put them in here and be full screen. Well, yes, they will. Um, and uh, the problem is in terms of engagement. If the reader is feeling like they're just scrolling through a lot of images that aren't adding anything, um, then it becomes surplus. Um, and at that case, you may start to lose people's attention. So it's really important to be strict um, and kind of have that real editorial eye on when an image is adding something and when you just put it in because perhaps, you know, there were five and you're finding it difficult to choose because you took them and we all get attached to our own content. Um, so just make sure you're, you're trying to um, be strict with how you're doing it. Um, so uh, what I'll do is um, let's embed a video to show you how you do that in line. Um, so what can I use? I've got a video that shows you, um, let's have a look. Um, if I go to here and to our guide. So what I'm going to do is I've got a few little videos on YouTube, which are kind of like um, tutorial videos, but um, they're kind of, they're very um, basic. Um, and I've got one that shows you how to edit the title section. Um, I've also got one that comes on to um, how you can tweet out your story, um, which is here. So I'm going to add that in, but I'm going to do that when I get to there. So we'll come back to, to how you do that. Um, so now I'm going to move on to the next um, tip. So number six um, is the embed code. So we're there. Okay, so um, I'll paste this, this in. So um, within shorthand social, as I've said, you can embed codes in line. Um, so I've, uh, I will come on to that example that's been sent to me. Just first of all, um, just so I make sure that my post makes sense when I publish it, I've written that, for example, I could embed a tweet below this paragraph like this. So what I would do is I would click um, insert media and then hit embed code, and I would paste the code in here. 
Um, so the key, as I mentioned, is that the code is responsive. Um, so um, if you're not sure, then there's a neat little website called Embed Responsibly, which works with a few different um, tools that do not have automatically responsive code. But if you click on them, so let's say Instagram, for example, um, you put in the Instagram page URL that you want to embed, click Embed, you get a preview of that Instagram post, and then underneath you're given some responsive code. So you could simply copy that and paste it in here, and it would then embed that Instagram into your story. And it would be responsive, which would mean obviously when we get down to the mobile phone size screen, we won't crop an image that's set to a pixel width beyond the width of our mobile screen. So I'm going to start with a tweet because that's what I've written in my um, story. If I go to, I'm just going to find a tweet. I think I've got something fairly relevant in here. Yeah, so I tweeted the other day about the fact you can embed HTML in shorthand social. So I'm going to now grab that tweet to embed it. Oh, that's good. Let's try that again. Embed tweet. There we go, that's better. It's still not giving me code though. What's going on here? Let's try doing it a different way. Okay, I'm not sure what was happening there with Twitter, but there we go. So I'm going to copy that, go back to my story, paste it in, click insert, and now my tweet is embedded um, in line. Again, you can change the sizing. Um, I'm going to leave it as is, and you can add a caption, um, a tweet embedded in the shorthand social. I could add a caption in if I wanted. I'm actually going to take that out because I don't think it's necessary. Um, and then I could um, continue with my story. As I said, the key is that it's responsive and you can use that embed responsively to check. Also, obviously, um, you can use your preview function, which you should use throughout creating the story, to actually see what that looks like. Move your browser window down so you can have a look at that on a smaller screen. Okay, let's um, have a go with the example that was sent to me. So um, I think the way that you would do it is just to embed this entire tweet. I don't know if that's what you were asking specifically or if I can just grab the video out of that. Um, but let's see what happens with the video when I embed it like this. Uh, and I'll hit story preview to see what happens. Okay, so it doesn't look like it auto plays, but the video My name is, is there. Okay, is that what you were uh, looking for? <laughs> I think this is, is this pupil that I'm talking to? Yes. Okay, cool. Well, that's good. <laughs> okay, so um, uh, please don't take it personally, but I'm now going to delete that video from this post. <laughs> um, so let me just go back to the um, editor. Oh, okay, so Paul said there's an embed video option. Let's try it. Whoops, Daisy, sorry, I didn't mean to do that. Embed video. Copy. Let's swap it out, so let's drop that one back in. Insert. So um, yeah, except it's slightly left aligned, so you might want to drop in some additional HTML to centrally align that, but otherwise um, it seems to work to just put in the video. Essentially, you know, as long as the HTML is correct, it should work. Um, it's just the responsive side of it, which if it's something you're embedding which is larger than a mobile screen, you'd obviously need to just um, keep an eye on. Um, but the video seems to be in there. My name is 
hope that helps. Um, so I'm going to click embed. Go back to the edit. Um, back to where we were. Okay, so let's just delete that for this post. Um, okay, I'm going to keep going with the tips. So number seven, keep the length in mind. Um, so there is a section limit in shorthand social. You can add um, up to 20 sections in total. Um, and uh, the, the, the key thinking here is, A, obviously from an engagement perspective, how long someone's likely to engage with a narrative um, beyond kind of 20 sections, but also um, even more so from a performance point of view. And this is something that's really important, and we, we do everything we can within Shorthand Social to help you with that um, in terms of how, um, how these stories perform. And so keeping it to um, 20 sections is, is something we can do to help to ensure that it performs well um, across browsers. Um, you know, if you think to older browsers that really do struggle with particularly media-rich stories. Um, so that's why the 20 section limit is in there. Obviously, um, I've got fairly long text sections in here. Um, so 20 of these would be pretty long. Um, and so I'd actually want to still be thinking about it from an editorial point of view as to how long I'm going to actually keep someone engaged with a series of tips. So here I'm being really um, strict in trying to keep it to under 10. Um, I cut it down to eight and then I regretted the two I'd taken out. So I put them back in. So um, I, I was at 10. Um, I could have probably had about 50 in here. So I, I tried to be strict with um, the essential tips. Um, so uh, that's that one. Tip number eight is to um, keep checking that preview, which we've um, obviously already um, covered really. Um, but just again, obviously to bear in mind, we all, we all know how important um, it is that we're creating stories for um, people who are looking at them across devices um, and not just on the screen size within which we're building. Um, so don't only look at the story in that um, environment. Um, so um, another thing to consider is that um, autoplay video um, doesn't work on um, iOS um, and uh, I think most um, Android as well. Um, so uh, in that case, um, the autoplay video, if you have any autoplay video in your story, um, will just be delivered as a still image grab um, on an iPhone, for example. So it's well worth um, actually looking at that preview um, on, on those environments so you really get an idea of what your reader is going to see. Um, I think that covers everything that's in that tip. So um, nearly there, number nine. Um, so this is just to think about the end of your story. Um, so obviously um, you'll close your narrative, but then what do you want the reader to do next? Now in Shorthand Social, um, we have um, share buttons built into the um, kind of footer of your story. So you'll have your byline again, and then um, the ability for people to um, tweet, um, uh, and share on Facebook um, and uh, engage with your author page. Uh, but if there's anything else you want them to do to look at another story, perhaps you've written a similar piece elsewhere or perhaps someone else has, and you want to kind of continue that um, uh, engagement with your reader um, on another platform, and uh, perhaps you want them to uh, donate to on a particular page or whatever it might be, um, just remember to have something at the end of your story that will encourage that, um, because otherwise you may find with everything else that they can do online, you're going to lose them to, a, to another screen. Um, so that's what um, that uh, tip is about. And then number 10 um, is about how you can keep um, your story alive after publishing. So it's that age old thing of not just publishing a story and walking away. Um, uh, so let me just drop this tip in here. Um, so Obviously, um, once you've um, published your story, um, you need to put the effort in to um, make sure you're sharing that across the different channels in which you're engaging with your community, growing communities, um, and as well as on your own um, website where you can promote it as well. Now, um, with Shorthand Social, um, the way that um, it works is that we do try and help you out a bit in terms of how you can promote uh, more effectively on um, Twitter. Um, so once you've finished creating your story, you can hit this button up here, which is review and publish. And as you see, when you click that, what we do is before you publish, we let you um, select and schedule tweets um, that we have generated automatically from your story. So each section that we've added has its own tweet. 
um, and we grab out any relevant media from that section as well. Um, and then the um, you can go through and you can turn off any that you don't want to send um, and turn on those that you do. Um, and then you can also schedule the timing between each of those tweets. So if you have a story that you um, want to send that is very much a complete narrative and so you actually perhaps want to send them within a minute of each other so your Twitter audience gets a kind of summary view of your story, um, then you would want to schedule it that way. If you perhaps have a story that's telling very distinct parts, so you might have, uh, you might be reporting on a subject and you cover it from five different angles within your um, story, then perhaps there you might want to schedule it um, more with more time between um, so that you kind of carry that, um, it's kind of like you're refreshing, delivering new content to your reader um, over a, a period of time. Um, so you can decide how you want to schedule that and then you would click OK Publish. And at that point, the first tweet will be sent out within 60 seconds. And then the rest will be sent based on your scheduling. Um, so I'm not there yet. So I'm going to click Keep Editing. I just wanted to show you how that works um, within um, Shorthand Social. Obviously, then you'd want to consider how you're going to share it beyond um, Twitter. And, and as well, later on Twitter, we have those initial tweets. But beyond that, um, you would need to go in and, and do your own um, promotion. Um, and just thinking about ways you can share it that um, goes beyond sharing the headline. So we try to get you thinking about that in the, the tweets that we auto-generate. So obviously, thinking about um, the wording, um, other key parts of the narrative that you can share. Um, I did speak to um, someone from, or the editor of BBC Travel, um, because they've done some work with us um, in shorthand, and I was keen to see what their approach was to promotion, because they did some great stuff um, in terms of how they shared a particular story recently. And um, their kind of key tip was, think about how you would um, tell a friend about it really quickly. So if you had like a few seconds to quickly tell your reader, oh, I heard, I heard this great story today, X, Y, Z, what would it be that you would tell your friend? And um, these are social platforms at the end of the day. So that kind of thinking works um, in terms of how you might want to communicate that to um, a social um, follower. And also thinking about where appropriate, what media you could add to that um, to encourage engagement um, even more. Um, that studies have proven that that works. Um, obviously, where it's uh, not, I'm not saying attach media to every single tweet you send. It should be done when it's right. Um, but just again, bearing that in mind. Um, so don't just share the headline and, and walk away and expect um, hordes to, to, to come um, come to the story. Um, I do have, again, um, I keep going to some posts that I've written. I have, we have this blog, insights.story.sh, where we share lots of tips and speak to different people that are using shorthand and that sort of thing to, to gather some insights. So if you want to take a look at that as well in your own time, um, then please go ahead. This is what I keep going to to find articles that I've written before. Um, so, for example, this one has a lot of tips in there about how to kind of spread the word about your story um, online. So I'm, I'm just going to add in a link to that here. Um, as I've pre-prepared that. Um, another thing that you can do is um, promote your story on your own blog or your own site that you um, probably have. Um, now, you can't embed your shorthand social story in its entirety. It remains hosted by us, and that's kind of the way that shorthand social works. But what you can do is embed um, a, a launch pad to your story. Um, so what I'm going to do is... Um, Go, uh, I'm going to open up my account in another window actually. Um, and I'm going to go to a recently published story of mine. So this is the one that we were just working on. So let's look at the spreading the word story. Um, so what I'm going to do is um, click embed. So once I've published my story in Shorthand Social, and I'll show you this in a moment when we've finished, um, I can grab an embed code for the story. If I click embed, um, it gives me this bit of iframe. And it gives me a little preview of what that will look like. So this is the launch pad that we can embed within um, your own website. I'm just going to jump to chat because I can see someone's asked something. Okay, um, so someone's just asked about um, some examples of stories published on shorthand. I'll, um, I'll point you to a, our Pinterest board in a moment because there's hundreds that you can look through. I did flag some examples earlier which were shorthand pro specific, but I'll also point you to um, our um, shorthand social Twitter account where I, I regularly retweet good examples. So um, I'll, I'll, I will come back to that. Um, so this is the um, 
uh, the launch pad this is what it looks like so it has your social media um, numbers integrated um, it has your title and um, subtitle it grabs your title um, media and then it gives you uh, it gives your reader rather the ability to then click through to your story so if I was to grab this from here copy that and then if I um, close this and go back to the actual story we were in um, I can embed this to show you how it looks so if I put that embed code in we can now click through to um, that story from this story ironically so um, that's what that would look like so you could embed that within your own site um, and then the final thing is obviously to remember to um, keep an eye on how people are engaging with it where people are engaging with it what the conversation is that's happening around your content and get involved in that conversation um, and look at your um, uh, analytics that you have within shorthand social we have um, page view um, Facebook share and Twitter um, shares um, collected for each story within your dashboard and um, to start to give you an idea but obviously also be looking at how people are connecting within social networks um, in terms of the wider conversation. Um, so um, that's pretty much all of my tips um, within this article. One thing I do just need to add in is my, um, my little attempt here at some um, further engagement. So at the end of my story, um, I'm going to just offer people to click through to um, that detailed guide I mentioned that we have on using shorthand social. Um, so I'm going to just go and find that guide again um, and add a link to that at the end of my story. Um, so I'm going to add in that. So that, that's how I'm going to try and encourage continued engagement at the end of the post. So this is now um, my post, which is pretty much there. Um, what I might want to do is, well, what I would want to do is click story preview and have a look at it on some different size screens and move my browser window around to see how it looks. Um, if I'm working with a colleague, I could get their opinion. Um, but once I'm ready to publish, as I mentioned, I would click review and publish and click publish. Um, so let me just check. I've got these all in three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so I'm going to now publish. Um, this first tweet goes out as default. I'll keep the um, next one in. This one probably doesn't mean too much on its own, so I'm going to take that one out. Um, I'm going to take that one out too. So I'm going to go with these first two, and I'm going to space them 30 minutes apart. And if I click OK, Publish and Tweet, then it's now said that my story has published. My first tweet will be published within 60 seconds and the rest according to how I've scheduled them. Um, I can now go and view the live story. So this is the um, URL for my story. Um, and that's now live. I can embed my story. So again, if I wanted to embed that on my own website, that's where I can grab the embed code from. I can also go and grab it back from the dashboard at any point like I showed you just now. Um, and then I can go back to um, my dashboard by clicking on your stories. And we'll see um, that this is my story I just published. Um, so far, one tweet, one view, which was me. Um, and so that's now sitting there in my dashboard. At any point, I can click back into it and make a change. Um, and that change will be updated within the next five minutes. Any edits I make in here will go live. Um, and I can go and um, unpublish. If I need to unpublish the story later, I can go and do that, and it will delete tweets. Um, so it will cancel any unsent tweets, and it will delete any tweets already sent. So just be aware of that. If you do decide to unpublish, um, then it unpublishes kind of across the board. Um, so that's um, pretty much everything now within um, the editor. I hope that worked to do the two things at the same time. Um, uh, I hope it worked from, from your perspective. Um, let me just check um, if there was anything else that we needed to um, cover. Oh, that was it. Someone asked about examples. So um, we have a um, Pinterest board um, here. So if you want to take note of that URL, it is linked to from the Shorthand Pro website as well, but just to, um, if you want to take a note of that while it's on screen. Um, these are all stories that have been created with Shorthand Pro, which is our enterprise tool. It offers additional features, um, additional section types, customizations, so people can bring in their own fonts and colors. 
Um, uh, additional developer tools so you can add custom HTML and custom, uh, sorry, you can add custom HTML like you can in Shorthand Social, but you can also add in um, custom CSS and custom JavaScript if you want to do more um, in, in that way of things. And the other key, um, key thing is, uh, okay, thanks Paul, I'll take a look at it in, in a moment. That was always going to be a risk that I messed, uh, I messed up uh, something in that, doing it like that. Um, uh, so, uh, sorry, within uh, Shorthand Pro, one of the kind of fundamental differences is with that, that the stories are actually exported and hosted by the, the person or the organization that's created them. So with Shorthand Social, we host them. Um, so um, it has our branding on and our, our um, domain. But with Shorthand Pro, the idea is it's very much hosted by the, the client. Um, so hopefully um, you'll sort of enjoy looking through a few different examples um, in here. If you're looking specifically for examples created within Shorthand Social, um, then if you take a look at our um, uh, Twitter account, twitter.com forward slash Shorthand Social, um, then in here um, I regularly um, retweet some different examples um, of stories that have been um, promoted by, um, by creators um, in Shorthand Social. So. Um, you should be able to take a look at a few of those um, and uh, and get a good idea of how different people are using it. But it's one of those things where you can create very different types of stories. You might have a story that is largely um, just full screen images. You might have a story that's um, largely text. You might get a story that's actually quite in depth and has a series of chapters. Those text over media sections are quite nice for having kind of chapter headings as you move through a story. Visually, it kind of really illustrates well the movement into a new um, chapter of a story. Um, Paul's asked about um, analytics um, and whether there's any plans to add any more detail there. Um, I, I know that what we have at the moment in terms of just views is, is kind of, you know, that's our, our kind of first um, kind of step. Um, so this, we launched Shorthand Social uh, a couple of months ago. Um, so, you know, there's certainly a lot of different things that we're looking into in terms of future development. So, and we know, and I, I you know, obviously fed back on this before and that, very much that the fact that the engagement metrics are moving towards uh, already moved towards um, how long people are spending with it and with shorthand pro there is the ability for people to integrate their own analytics and and that is um, those are stats that we look at um, that can be looked at in google analytics etc within shorthand social for now it is just the the view side of things but um, you know i'm sure that that's an area that we'll be looking into um, and uh, i absolutely agree that you know time spent um, is is uh, is an important one um, so immersive, uh, so Paul's just asked about um, uh, what's happened with immersive. So uh, immersive was um, our kind of first step into creating a tool that could be used by individuals. So um, as I said before, Shorthand Pro is very much um, created for organizations and um, it's there's a cost to use it. Um, and so it's obviously something that is for uh, a company or um uh, a business to, to be able to um, use. And so Immersive was um, created to enable an individual um, who wanted to do this sort of thing um, but didn't have the, the kind of the, the resource, the financial resources behind them like an organization does to be able to um, kind of pay um, the, the, the money to do it. Um, and so um, that's why, that's how, why uh, Immersive came about. Um, but um, we kind of felt there was more that we could do to help people make sure that their content was also integrated within the social web. Um, and so um, that's, that's why we moved into this idea of having shorthand social. And part of that was that we wanted it to be connected to people's Twitter accounts so that they could um, kind of have that immediate integration with their existing um, networks um, on Twitter. Um, so um, that was how Shorthand Social came about, which is um, a kind of separate platform, but it is an evolution of Immersive. So if you've used Immersive, then hopefully you'll see in the editor, um, you know, the, the kind of general interface is basically the same, um, but we kind of have the addition of new features that we'll be, you know, continuing to work on. Um, and obviously the fact that you log in with Twitter now is the kind of key thing in terms of shifting to a new platform. Um, and then the, the auto generation of tweets to try and help people with that whole idea of not just publishing and walking away and also thinking more creatively about how you're sharing these stories on social media, because, you know, these are visual 
um, stories. And so not only is it nice to be able to share the visuals um, on Twitter, but also these are quite often long form stories that are made up of numerous parts. They have, you know, key chapters or whatever it might be. And so being able to deliver that in a better way on Twitter um, was something we felt was a, an area that hadn't really been um, kind of innovated um, so much in terms of a tool that helped you do to, to do that automatically. Um, so that was that was hopefully, um, that's how it came about. So hopefully that answers your question, Paul. Um, so um, I, I have kind of some summarizing um, points, unless there's um, any other um, questions um, at all. Um, I'll tell you what, I'll run through them and then if there are, feel free to just send them over on chat. Um, so I think the key things to kind of take away or hopefully that you'll take away is that the, the story itself is obviously key and the narrative and the way in which it's structured is incredibly important to um, ensuring that um, uh, engagement. It's not a case of kind of just throwing everything in um, and that it will kind of work itself out. Um, there, there does need to be that kind of editorial um, approach in thinking about how you're best communicating each part of your story. Um, think about how you can plan it so when you first um, consider your story try and break it down even if it's just on paper as I say a rough idea of the structure um, um, before you start pulling it in but then as soon as you can start pulling it into the platform and, and trying around um, different um, styles. Don't let mobile be an afterthought um, obviously as we've as we've discussed and everyone knows um, you're, you're creating these experiences for people across multiple devices so make sure that you um, take a look at it across those devices um, and don't just wait until the last moment to remember um, that people are looking at it on mobile um, plan your promotion as soon as you can don't leave it until you've already hit publish and then think about how you're going to promote it it should kind of form part of the entire strategy be strict with the media that you're using as I said it should add to the storytelling not be surplus um, also consider um, the uh, end of the story and what your reader is going to do next. Don't let the end of your story be the end of your engagement with them. If you've got a reader that's read to the bottom of your story, they're obviously really, um, uh, they're really enjoying what you're doing. So um, they're likely to enjoy another um, similar piece of content. So consider if there's an opportunity there and don't leave it up to them to find it and um, help hold their hand. Um, the title section is your shop window, so use it um, effectively in your wording, in the media that you use, in how you actually start telling the story from the moment someone arrives, um, as opposed to just using it as a title um, uh, uh, and then waiting for them to move into your narrative. Um, and then um, where you can, um, make sure you're, you're listening to your feedback from your readers, listening to the conversations that are happening on social. Um, if you have um, you know, comments being made about stories that you're actually looking at those and, and you know, using constructive criticism to improve how you're doing things next time. And look at where people are engaging with these stories. Um, I think Facebook is um, you know, a particularly interesting platform as well. You know, it's not just about Twitter. Um, and we've seen you know, huge engagement with um, immersive stories on um, Facebook too. And in fact, actually, um, at this conference I was at yesterday, I think there was a statistic to do with news for those who were on Facebook and Twitter and how many access news on them. I think it was like uh, four in 10 on Facebook and one in 10 on Twitter, um, something like that. Um, so obviously it's, um, it's a cross network strategy that's required and not the same strategy on Twitter necessarily to be applied on Facebook. Um, okay, so that's everything guys. Um, I hope that didn't go on too long and it was helpful. Um, and yeah, feel free to take a look at that um, blog um, if you're interested in what other people are doing and learning. Um, lots of tips being shared on there. Um, I've just uh, shared the link on the in the chat box. Anything, anything else, feel free to turn audio on now, by the way, if you want to actually speak to me. <laughs> Uh, thank you very much for that, Rachel. It was a really fascinating um, overview, actually, and both in terms of the tool and uh, and the wider context. I don't know if anyone else does have any other questions. I, I, I know most of them have been asked in chat. I'll take that silence with a yes. <laughs> this is one of those, uh, you have no idea, you have no kind of verbal or... or visual feedback as to whether your, your, your presentation. <laughs> That's why I always like to stop halfway through and just make sure I'm actually still connected to everyone because yeah, I have the yeah. feeling one day I'll just be talking for an hour and uh, everyone's suddenly lost their internet connection as I'm like. <laughs> <laughs> cool, okay, I'm glad that was helpful.
No, that was great. Thank you. And I know um, I, I should have mentioned actually that one one of the students who can't be in this chat, um, who works on a, a Cambodian uh, newspaper website, he has done quite a lot in long form uh, already, kind of hand coded, and um, he's aware of this tool. But I'm sure this will, will be very useful to him in particular. So I will. I'm hoping this video will um, will record uh, well, and uh, and I'll be able to share that with him. So I'm going to stop recording now.